Hello and welcome to WTO Forum. In recent decades, the way we trade has changed profoundly. Products are no longer made in Brazil or made in Belgium. They're made in the world. This is thanks to the expansion of supply and production chains around the world. To illustrate the rapid expansion of these value chains, consider the fact that if you exclude mineral and fuel trade, parts and components comprise far more than 50% of global trade today. So the question is, with the expansion of these supply and, and uh, production chains, what impact have we seen on job creation, on the global economy more generally, and on trade itself? We're fortunate to have with us today two experts on this matter. We have Hildegan Noras, the Senior Trade Policy Analyst with the Trade and Agriculture Directorate at the OECD. Welcome. Thank you. And Mr. Robert Sterer, the Deputy Director of Research at the Vienna Institute for International Economic Studies. Welcome to you both. Hildegun, let's begin with you. What has been the impact of this amazing transformation in trade on the global economy and on trade? Well, actually, I would like to, uh, to focus a little bit on, on what it has done for jobs and employment, if you allow. Mm -hmm. And here, I think it's very important to uh, actually distinguish between this fragmentation or the globalization of production and fragmentations of jobs. Before, because what we actually see is that, uh, that the firms will increasingly source their parts their components, their, even their services from, uh, from outside firms and suppliers all over the world, more or less. And we also see that they focus on a narrow, narrower range of, uh, of products and services. But still, they employ a full range of occupations and workers still do a wide range, wide range of tasks. So it seems that uh, that this fragmentation of, uh, of production doesn't kind of show up in, uh, in a narrower range of tasks. And, uh, and we have this uh, big discussion about trade in tasks and uh, that that is kind of offshoring uh, middle skilled works and uh, basically uh, the uh, routine tasks that worker used to do are moving abroad and this is a new threat to um, to uh, middle skilled workers, the breadwinners in the economy. And what we have looked at is to try to see whether these tasks are actually split up and offshored or whether they are still kept together. And we actually find that they are kept more or less together. Robert, your thoughts? Well, let me also focus on the employment effects of trade integration and uh, offshoring, as it is called. Um, I mean, we did a little bit of similar research uh, on the overall employment effects and generally we find well, no particular negative effects of offshoring to employment levels as, a, as such. Um, saying that, uh, one has to recognize, however, that so these are long-run effects and they are in this process of integration of production chains, integration of uh, the world economy in producing several products, there are winners and losers which have to be taken into account and which have to be taken seriously, as is a serious political issue, of course. And these gains from trade liberalization, gains from offshore, are often in the longer run seeable, but not so much already in the short run where you have a lot of adjustment costs or adjustment to new industry structures, to new tasks which have to be performed by the domestic. Uh, workers in the way. So having talked now about the effect on uh, say the offshoring countries which are mm -hmm. mostly say the developed countries or the more advanced countries, the literature is focusing I think too much on the developed countries and not what are the effects on the developing economies or emerging market economies. Uh, here again probably we find positive employment effects as jobs offshore, say in, in Europe or US, must create almost by definition jobs in the other countries. The question is, of course, in which way 
uh, which jobs are created there and which uh, circumstances these jobs are created. So what's the quality of jobs there and so on. And this is, I think, the both views which have to be taken into account when discussing uh, uh, trade integration, offshoring, and employment effects that one think about both sides of this uh, process. Is there any reason to expect that the trend towards these value chains would accelerate, would continue apace? Uh, it seems that everything is going in this direction. Is there anything that might lead one to suspect that this might be changed in the future? I think so. I think actually when we look at the data on trade in intermediate goods and services, it's very true what you said that it's more than 50%. But it has been more than 50% for the last 20 years. So it seems to have leveled off a bit already. And what, what we look at uh, when we analyze this is on the one hand you have lowering trade costs that facilitate this kind of vertical separation of, of production. On the other hand, you also have coordination costs. So it costs something also to uh, supervise and monitor your suppliers. It costs money to, uh, to comply with standards. And increasingly we have seen even climate uh, issues like a storm or an earthquake or a cloud, uh, ash cloud for, <laughs> from the Icelandic volcano can actually disrupt these, uh, these supply chains. And then you see that uh, there are also gains from having a little bit of slack in the supply chain so that you can actually cover such episodes of disruptions. So I guess that uh, the balance between the cost of offshoring, the coordination costs of doing that, and the uh, gains from cheaper inputs are more or less have reached the plateau, and, uh, and we might see that it stays this way for a while. Do you share that view, Robert? Well, I, I have well, two points to make here. <laughs> the first one is this 50% uh, relative stable shares in trade and intermediates is uh, coming from doing measurements on the manufacturing uh, industry sectors. So here we have a leveling off of the 50%, which do not change too much, and the changes are often only price level changes of raw materials, etc. Uh, another aspect which has to be taken into account however, is the service offshoring, which is more and more coming, uh, becoming important now. And so I, th I think the nature of jobs is a little bit changing because manufacturing itself becomes more service oriented. And jobs which have been done in manufacturing might be offshore or outsourced first to services and then offshore to other countries like bookkeeping, marketing, uh, jobs, etc. So this is one of the aspects we have to include in this kind of what is coming next in the, in the whole offshoring uh, uh, procedure or processes uh, which comes to. The second point to make is here, uh, the effects of the crisis are not yet well understood and we do not know exactly what is the medium or longer run effect of the crisis, whether industries or firms start to back source what they've outsourced say in the beginning of the 2000s. And whereas there's also some discussion in some countries going on, now, like mostly the US, whether there should be some reindustrialization of these countries to keep some kind of the manufacturing industries in their countries as well. And these are kind of uh, developments which we, it's very hard to, 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 to take account of this, what this will bring in the medium well, run then. Hildegun, your final thoughts. I think there is, uh, there is one point that, uh, that uh, needs to be uh, looked at also, and that is we see this uh, kind of slicing up of, uh, of the production and activities being offshored or outsourced. But it's also quite interesting to look at this as a process where new industries are created. And I think one very good example is the humble uh, office cleaning which used to be performed in-house always in, in most firms. And then more and more firms started to, uh, to outsource it to, uh, to local suppliers. And then this industry developed into first the professional office cleaners, but now into a more 
kind of environmental services industry where you have new methodologies for cleaning in a more environmental way and so on. So this is what you often see when first a function or a task is being outsourced, that over time it develops into a new industry and, and that is how economies grow and uh, that is kind of what we see. Thank you. Robert, you have the last word. Uh, well, I, I fully agree that, uh, well, of course, this offshoring and trade integration also leads a lot of structural change in economies, maybe to get a restoration of new jobs, new tasks, interjobs, etc. What I think is uh, we have a, light, a, a very bewildering literature now on, well, trade in intermediates, offshoring, trade in tasks, this kind of rather different notions everyone is, is putting to that. So we will have uh, a lot of work to do in, 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 in seeing how to disentangle these effects, how to see, well, offshoring is related to technology, to structural change, and how this is feeding back to employment levels or, or and the structure of jobs being created or lost in developing countries, but as I said in the beginning, also in developed or in less developed countries. Then. Robert Starer. Hildegan Noras, many thanks to you both. And thanks to you for watching WTO Forum.